Hi guys, welcome back to the Boeing Bookshelf, and it's Shadow Fever. This is the fifth book in this in the fe uh, Fever series by Karen Marie Monning. Um, and there will be spoilers. I'm sorry, but I feel like these books have been out for a while. It'll be okay. Uh, so if you want to read it or you haven't read it yet, pause. Come back to it when you have. Excuse the dogs; they want to be part of this too. Anyways, sorry, back to the business at hand. Um, so, Shadow Fever, I mean, picks up, I mean, within almost the same oh. sentence. Oh, it, Shadow Fever picks up pretty much in the same, pretty much in the same sentence as uh, Dream Fe Fever ended. So, at the end of Dream Fever, Mac ends up killing this beast and she is absolutely horrified of that uh, of what she had just done um and in this one we in the beginning we realize who that beast was and it was barons and the first time i read that that was like a really big shock this time that's like i i was able to pick up the the details and the nuances even in dream fever um um that this was barons uh, just for like little subtleties that of the coloring um uh, how all the beasts acted, I knew that it was Barons, um, or I was able to recognize it was Barons this time, the second time around. Um, so with that, Matt then, Matt goes head first into grief and mourning. It's unbelievable how much she grieves this man, this man who's been a pain in her ass uh, since the beginning. Um, she has realized that she started to love him, um, and when and then she feels tremendous guilt for killing him, um, and I, she starts to. I feel like I feel like the way that she treated this was a bit like um, death is the great equalizer or eraser of all bad things. Um, and Mac romanticized it a little bit. It's almost kind of like, I use the term Stockholm Syndrome, even though he wasn't holding her captive or anything like that, but because of his death, she was, you know, everything that he did was in the benefit for her, and she was looking at that as, as you know, a tough love. She needed that. So, um, I feel like her, I feel like it kind of just, it's her mentality or her, her thinking was a little skewed. So she was overlooking all the bad things that Barons had done, or the, the the harsh things that Barons has ever said to her or did to her, and stuff like that. Um, and she also then admits to like, and then she starts regretting not. Um, excuse the cap. Um, she regrets not like admitting her feelings to him or to herself. So it starts off pretty kind of dark and heavy. We we see Matt go down this rabbit hole of. She's making contingency plans to bring this man back. She's willing to um, destroy the world and remake it to bring this man back, um, which is something that we, it's, it's just kind of like a, a newer thing for Mac. Um, so when Mac finally decides that she needs to, to start moving on with her plans to destroy the world, um, she um, she does team up with with uh, Derek, Derek, Derek. Um, and I love the way that Monning did the information that Derek gives Matt because it was really I feel like if she basically summarizes it for uh, Matt summarizes it for us, um, which is really good because it would have been super heavy and long dialogue with how much information that he was giving her, and it was almost you know it was it was very in detail, a little bit more like a history lesson. Um, so I'm glad that Matt, or that Monty was able to summarize all that from, from Matt's point of view. Um, Danny tells the story for a little bit. Um, you know, she, like, we, we first see Danny start telling the story a little bit in Dream Fever. Well, now she, we get a bit more of that. There's not, it's not just like a couple of chapters in the beginning, it's a couple of chapters spread out. Um, and Barons also tells us a, 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 a chapter because we realize 
Barons isn't dead, and this is was this was our clue that Barons didn't actually die. Uh, he died in beast form, but he's he's back, um, and it's a very short, like maybe two paragraph chapter, and he's a man of little words. Um, he's more action instead. So, um, but it was really cool. My only complaint with that is it's they've not it's not labeled on who's actually talking. Um, so I wish there was, you know, Danny's taking over or Barons instead of um, just trying to guess through context clues and, and how the character's talking. Because um, Danny has very specific um, um, phrasings. Barons does too, and Matt. So it's like you kind of have to see which one is talking and pay attention to it. Um, there are even a couple of chapters where Danny take Danny starts the chapter, but after like a page or two, it switches back to Matt, and you're already like in the mentality of, of Danny, and then all of a sudden word format and structure and all that stuff changes back to Matt, and it's a little confusing. So that's really my only complaint, um, or not really only compl only complaint, but that one was like a kind of a big thing. It was like pulling me out of the world a little bit. Even this time, even the second time around, I was like, um, I was a little bit thrown off on, on who was telling the story. Um, but I did love that. I loved the point of view from Danny, and I love the, that first reaction of Baron's being back and realizing, oh, he's pissed. Really pissed. Um, so I like that. It was a little bit of a change. Um, Mac has, so, Shadow Fever was supposed to be the last book, or supposed to be the last book. Um, it was supposed to end out Michaela Lane's novels. Um, so Mac has already reached her peak and her, and she's plateaued. Like she's already reached how far she's going, at least for right now. Um, so Mac is still, you know, the total badass. Um, she is still standing up for herself. She's still willing to kick ass and and take names and all that stuff. She's she's. Um, still great um she's just more certain part parts of the book she is like well there's nothing left for me to lose everything's been taken from me um i'll destroy the world to, in order to fix the way to fix the world the way that i see fit type mentality um so not bad but it was she, she did go a bit of a darker path for a second um um The only, so, the on the other hand with this is during most of the book, Mac is very upset. She almost kind of sort of throws a little temper tantrum, mentally throwing a temper tantrum. Um, of like, why won't people believe me? Because she did kind of switch teams for a minute um, and team up with um, um, Derek. When, because that was a means to her end to, in order to recreate a world. Um... And, um, but she's not willing to explain her situation as to why she did it. She, so she wasn't, she wasn't expecting, or she wasn't expecting, um, she wasn't willing to explain her thought process or her planning. It would have been, and I granted, and I know in, in, in books, storytelling you know it had to happen this way because if not it would have ended it really differently or really short anyways um so but yeah it was just a little little annoying with like mac will well no one believes me or finally someone's believing me when someone does believe her it's like um you just you could have solved this whole thing if you had just explained yourself um but it's also a prime example of why communication is key um so Drake ends up being killed by the book, and the book is now is has and ultimately has really been the main baddie. It's been the one thing that everyone's been searching for, and it is the one big bad piece in this puzzle that um, was really there the whole time, and just no one was really giving it the credit it was due. Uh, but the book is everywhere, and it is hunting Michaela really really bad so it, it, it's showing itself in in different forms and and it was it's 
we see it more prevalent in this book. Um, so with Barons, when we know that Barons come, he was the beast and he died and he's come back. We also know that the guys that broke into the Abbey to rescue Mac um, when she was the uh, after being raped by the Fey Princes, um, she uh, or he comes in, comes barging in with eight other men. And um, we know that they're all the same. They all do the same thing. They all change into a beast. And they all apparently don't die. Um, we meet a few more of the guys. Um, and it's really, really cool. Igor. Um, so I, I really do love how we were able to kind of expand Baron's world a little bit. Um, and meet most of them. They're all jerks. Um, there's a reason why they all hang around barons. Um, they're all jerks. They all get along. When the first time that I read this book, I assumed that this was the end. There wasn't going to be any more, um, books involving Danny or Michaela or barons. Um, so I was a little disappointed, um, the first time reading it. I'm just now realizing, oh, we are just now getting a glimpse into Barons, and just now getting into um, how the Silvers work, um, the world, the, the, the Fey realm, um, Barons' guys, and what they do, or what they are, even though we still don't know what they are, um, because it's kind of like, if we tell you, we kill you type of mentality. Um, so, um, but yeah, so like the first time I was reading this, it was almost like, Man, this is a real bummer. You're opening up this whole big world for us, and but this is it. You did this in the last book, but um, now I know that there are more, and we get a whole bunch more. Uh, but yeah, so the second, second time around, I was like really, truly cherishing these moments because I didn't quite remember um, everything that happened and transpired, and really wanting to get into the other books where. I know these guys now, and they're really cool, and I and I can't wait to spend time with them. Um, but and then with with going, again going back to Barons, we see a whole different side of himself that you know he him and Mac have finally gotten over the issues. Oh. Um, but we finally get like Barons and Mac like opening up together and admitting that hey dude I like you I like you too um not that they say it quite quite like that but you know and you know we see that Matt that Barons really does care for for Mac and vice versa and just to know that it doesn't just end here it, it's really really awesome and I really loved it um and we I really like that, and like Barons has made it very clear in this book that he enjoys what he is. He enjoys the beast. He enjoys every action he does, um, and I really do like that in a male character. I feel like I feel like that's so. It's so enjoyable for me to 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 read about a male who is very proud of himself. Um, not quite an arrogant personality, but he doesn't condemn himself for being what he is, unlike other some characters um and other certain books that yeah um anyways um going on but <laughs> chat throw that out there um but yeah so those moments with mac and baron were so intense they were so awesome and i loved it um and i'm so glad that it just it continues on i'm glad the series continues on um i did so and Matt kind of have, has a, a bit of a, of a, there's a little bit that kind of annoyed me with Mac in certain point, parts. She's very indecisive and is always questioning herself on what she's, what um, she is or what she should do or who she is. And she spends most of the book kind of going through a little bit of an identity crisis. Um, still love her, still love her personality, but man the identity crisis really hits her hard in this book. Um, the ending of the book, 
First time I read it, I really didn't like the ending of this book. Oh my god. I felt so let down at the end of this book. Um, the first time around, I really just was like, I have no idea what I'm reading and I don't like it. Don't like it one bit. It doesn't fit the narrative of the story. It doesn't fit the characters. Um, the second time around, it doesn't annoy me as bad. So, in the end of the book, um, you know, after everything is said and done with the big baddie and stuff like that, Barons and Mac um, go back to the bookshop and are um, trying to get life started back a little bit. Um, and we see Barons grilling for Mac's parents. And I was just like, this still doesn't feel right. Barons would never do this. Or at least at least the way that I've always pictured Barons. Barons would never do this. And but it also she and Barons does have moments like this in the previous books where he's painting her nails or he's doing this and that for Mac. And I'm just like this man has a stick of his ass the whole entire time and all of a sudden he is he's grilling for her and her parents. Doesn't quite sit well, but I don't know. I could be just that's just me being shallow or whatnot. I just feel like he's way too damn aggressive um, to be doing stuff like that. I just, but that's just me. Um, I've talked to friends or my, my best friend who was reading this story as, books as well. And she's like, no, she really does like those barren moments where, you know, he is painting her nails or, or whatnot. And I'm just like, I could do without it. I'm okay. So the ending was still kind of so-so for me. Um, I'm just relieved enough that it does continue on and I'm really happy about that um so like overall I really did like this book I I loved the characters and I loved being able to to see them all open up and the changes that they all made but yeah so like there's there was still quite a bit or not quite a bit but a little bit of like some some loose ends that really needed to be tied up um and it was just it was enough for her to continue on and i'm really really thankful that she was able to do it because this is just this is an amazing story an amazing world um but overall i i really really did love uh, shadow fever um it's probably my second favorite um dream fever is probably um, Actually, no, I can't even say that. I think they're about neck and neck because there's more parts of this one that I did like being because Mac and Baron's, uh, Mac and Baron's moments are just, I love their moments together. They're just, they complement each other. Um, and I do kind of get it like a little bit of like a, like a Beauty and the Beast vibe. Knowing that Baron's is the beast and Michaela was, you know, the beauty. Barons at the bookstore. Oh my god, and I don't know if that's just because I have now I've picked up on the Beauty and the Beast ref or not references because I don't really know for sure, but it just really comes off as being very Beauty and the Beast, and uh, I like I guess that's the reason why I'm 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 totally okay with overlooking Baron's assholelessness because he has a bookstore. It's amazing. Love the man. He's a jerk. Love him. Uh, but, so yeah, I just like, I just thought that was a little weird. It's like, huh, it's kind of Beauty and the Beast-like. Um, but anyways, so that is Shadow Fever uh, by Karen Rimani, book five. And uh, you can find these at Half Price Bookstore. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure you can buy them online. Amazon, Barnes & Noble online, libraries, I'm sure. Um, you can request it. Um, but yeah, totally check it out. Love this series. Um, it's really good and entertaining. Um, but yeah, so if you haven't liked us already, give us a like and a subscribe, comments, um, any book suggestions or whatnot. And until next time, uh, we'll see you later. Bye. And there's a little twist with Danny, even. Um, we do ultimately find out who killed uh, Elena and it was Danny and the first
first time I read that, I was so shocked. This time around, I knew it was coming. And I was able to catch the little foreshadowings of, um, even in the previous books, when Danny starts making her appearance and starts becoming real big and close with Mac, I could start seeing those foreshadowings. And, um, yeah, it that, that one was still kind of was like, oh, damn, Danny.